Most of the major dominoes in NFL free agency have already fallen, save for a few stragglers here and there. Looking at you, OBJ. This means that most NFL teams are going to have to fill their remaining needs through the NFL draft, which is coming up here in just about a month. That brings us to today's question. What are the remaining fancy relevant roster holes across the NFL and who could we realistically see filling them sooner rather than later? What are we waiting for? Let's get after it. Up first, we have the Dallas Cowboys running back room. Tony Pollard went ahead and took his talents to Nashville, leaving this team with only Deuce Vaughn, Rico Dowdle, Malik Davis, and Snoop Connor. Not exactly great. And overall, guys, this is 69% of their 2023 carries and 70% of the RB targets gone. See you later, vacated. No, we are probably not expecting Rico Dowdle and company to be taking on all that share because Pollard, Dowdle, really all these guys simply weren't all that good last year. Whether you want to look at PFF rushing grade, raw yards per carry, missed tackles, forced yards after contact, pick your favorite advanced metric and there's a good chance the Cowboys were average to below average in it last year. A very natural fit for the Cowboys in either the second or third round of the upcoming NFL draft is Texas running back Jonathan Brooks. Fun fact, Brooks actually had his ACL surgery done by none other than the Cowboys head physician. This means the Dallas Cowboys should be all too familiar with exactly how Brooks has progressed since tearing that ACL, which, you know, is pretty freaking good news when you're trying to invite a guy to your team and make him your feature back for the future. Looking at what some of the best draft pundits in the business have said, Lance Zerloin from NFL.com has actually comped Brooks to Jamal Charles, noting that, yes, they both went to Texas, but the similarities and their games as pass catchers and just overall explosive running backs could not be ignored. And my personal favorite, the ringer's Danny Kelly, is going with Small Mondre Stevenson. I think I actually nailed that pronunciation there. Danny's comps always crush it. Regardless, guys, Brooks really does seem like someone that could have had a big chance of being the consensus RB1 in this class. Had he not been recovering from that ACL, it would make a lot of sense if the Cowboys, given their innate knowledge of the injury, go ahead and take a chance on the homegrown talent on day two of the upcoming draft. Up next, we have another RB needy team, this time the Los Angeles Chargers. And if you wanna guess who I'm about to tell you guys is a good potential fit, I think you can probably come pretty close. Sticking with the here and now though, 87% of the Chargers 2023 running back carries and 91% of their targets are vacated in the form of Austin Eckler going to the Commanders and Joshua Kelly remaining an unrestricted free agent. This leaves the Chargers with ex-Ravens bell cow Gus Edwards who, yes, should have a pretty decent sized role in early down and short yardage situations, but beyond the Gus bus, we're talking about Isaiah Spiller, Jared Patterson, Elijah Dotson, all guys that don't even have 100 career professionals touches to their names yeah i think we can go ahead and need to make a splash here whether it's going to be in free agency or the draft because remember everyone jim harbaugh absolutely loves running the football and in all but two of his 17 seasons as head coach his offenses have indeed run the ball more than they've thrown it now yes it's a little bit different than you know having justin herbert under center versus doing things at michigan and stanford back in the day but hell look at those stanford teams even with generational quarterback back Andrew Luck under center, Harbaugh was still more than willing to keep on establishing the old run. This naturally led to some pretty solid fantasy performances from one Frank Gore during his time with the 49ers. Specifically, Gore never had fewer than 266 touches during his four seasons as Harbaugh's lead back, and he wound up posting top 24 PPR numbers in three of those four seasons. Enter our potential fit. As you might have been able to guess, Michigan man himself, Blake Corum, scored a program record 61 touchdowns during his time at Michigan. And while a lot of them, specifically 22 of 27 his last season, came from inside the five-yard line, we are still talking about a guy who, at his peak, was one of the best running backs in college football. I understand the efficiency numbers in 2023 weren't quite as good in 2022 before he suffered that nasty knee injury. That said, you could see down the stretch against tougher competition. Corum began to get his burst back and accordingly, he actually reached a top speed per next-gen stats of 20.5 miles per hour. That's faster than anything Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, or DeAndre Swift were able to put up in 2023 themselves. Blake Corum, Jim Harbaugh, let's make it happen. Up next, we're moving way across the league. 
No, we're not. We're still talking to Chargers. This time, their wide receiver room, and objectively, I think the saddest group of pass catchers in the league at this moment. That's what happens when you send Keenan Allen to the Bears and you let Mike Williams go ahead and go and sign with the Jets. So I get it. Those guys are both aging. Mike's been hurt. Keenan's not exactly been a model of good health over the years. But at the end of the day, guys, 61% of their 2023 wide receiver targets and air yards are now vacated. With that in mind, we now have a wide receiver room that consists of... I think we can probably say at this point, first round bust Quentin Johnston, Darius Davis, Josh Palmer, and something named Simi Fajoko. So Josh Palmer, I think is a fine enough complimentary receiver and Quentin Johnston, even if he did not come close to meeting expectations as a rookie, could still provide some burst in the yak element. I'm sure Harbaugh does remember that from the TCU game after all. Either way, a ton of work needs to be done to a room and now at least the Chargers after making those Keenan Allen and Mike Williams moves do actually have ample cap space to get that done. Specifically, we are talking about the Chargers having the fifth most effective cap space at the moment per overthecap.com. In addition to all that cap space, the Chargers actually find themselves with five different selections inside of the top 110 overall picks in the upcoming NFL draft. Not too shabby, and they should absolutely use at least one, if not multiple, of those draft picks on wide receivers to get Justin Herbert some new weapons. However, that's not where I'm going with my potential fit. What if we go ahead and get a reunion of sorts going, bring Odo Beckham Jr. back to Los Angeles, and this time put a lightning bolt on his helmet? I get it. 565 receiving yards and just three touchdowns weren't exactly what the Ravens had in mind from OBJ last season after they agreed to pay him $15 million hairs for his services. That said, if we do go ahead and look at in the past, Michael Crabtree was Jim Harbaugh's number one receiver, but he was willing to add guys like Anquan Bolden, Brandon Lloyd, and even Stevie Johnson to the squad by 2014, all veterans who had already played for multiple teams and gotten pretty long in the tooth by that point. With OBJ, I really hope they don't bring him in to be the number one by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think they could do worse than having Beckham as their number two or number three. He did rack up the 11th most yards last season in terms of defensive pass interference penalties drawn, and also was only one of 10 wide receivers to average at least 16 yards per reception. I really think this would be a nice real life fit, but at a minimum, Justin Herbert, Jim Harbaugh, OBJ, the media would be happy about this fit, and we'd get some nice touchdown celebrations in Los Angeles from a presumably happy OBJ. And finally, can we for the love of God get Kyler Murray a real wide receiver one out here? The Arizona Cardinals right now have 58% of their 2023 wide receiver targets and 54% of the air yards currently vacated after Marquise Brown went to the Chiefs and Rondale Moore was traded the Falcons. This leaves their starting three wide receivers as first Michael Wilson, rising second year wide receiver, who I think impressed a bit more than the numbers indicated, specifically ESPN's advanced receiver rating analytics, gave Michael Wilson the sixth best overall catch rating last season. There's also Greg Dorr, too, is a bit small, despite what he might be telling opposing cornerbacks after mossing their ass in the end zone, and he has a bunch of yak-related highlights to his name for a guy with just 79 career receptions. I'm a fan. That's cool. If he's a starting slot, that's great. After that, though, guys, oh my goodness, it gets rough. Zach Paschal, Chris Moore, Jeff Smith, the dude from the Jets. The Cardinals are so weak right now, and they really shouldn't be considering how good Kyler Murray was looking down the stretch of last season. From weeks 10 through 18, this was a legit top 10 offense in terms of EPA per play, yards per play, and touchdown drive percentage. And that was without even having healthy version of Marquise Brown out there in the first place. So, who could we add? Who might myself, a Columbus, Ohio lifer, potentially put on this Cardinals offense in 2024? You got it. Marvin Harrison Jr., come on down and be the new look Gen Z version of DeAndre Hopkins that Kyla Murray and this Cardinals offense so desperately need. Fantasy Life's Matthew Friedman echoes this sentiment in his latest mock draft, and yeah, it just seems to make a lot of sense, guys. There have been reports specifically from Dane Brugler that certain NFL teams might actually consider Malik Neighbors to be the number one wide receiver out there. That said, we're talking about a very small difference in terms of their ability if you actually want to start going down that rabbit hole and try and decide who is better. If you had to pick between Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors, the answer is yes. They're both awesome. 
The consensus top six, top 10 picks, they, they had been for months. It's infuriating that we're spending this much time trying to tear down either guy. Regardless, Marvin Harrison Jr. on the Arizona Cardinals or Malik Neighbors for that matter, let's give Kyler Murray a legit number one wide receiver and see what happens. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, one caveat I will say is I was focusing a lot on teams that lost players through trades or in free agency. So didn't spend a ton of time on, you know, the Carolina Panthers who, let's face it, could probably upgrade running back, wide receiver, tight end alike, even though they didn't necessarily lose any key pieces from that sad excuse of an offense that they put forward last season. Sorry for catching that random stray there, uh, Panthers fans. But yeah, let me know in the comments any other landing spots or potential fits that you guys are particularly enamored by. And otherwise, just have a great freaking day. NFL Draft's coming up. A great day to be great. Thank you for watching.